What's going on guys? Uh, I'm back to do another review video, but I uh, decided to switch up the format a little bit. I used to do my reviews and talk about all the books that I picked up from that week, but uh, I just decided that I read so much, you know, so many other things other than just single issues every week that, um, that I'm not going to restrict myself into talking about, uh, you know, just those single issues. And sometimes I don't have anything that I, awesome, you know, anything great that I want to say about any, you know, some of the books that I pick up. So in this new format, I'm going to talk about uh, the single issues that I read every week, uh, the one, those that I feel like I have something to say about, and uh, and that will be first. And then I'll also talk about whatever trades I read over the course of that week, because there's usually a couple. I'm always reading some sort of trade. And then also, uh, I do read a novel from time to time, so if I do that, I will also... Uh, I will also include that in these videos for those of you who are in, who are interested, and that'll be uh, at the very end. So um, I'm going to try out this new format. We'll see how it works out. But uh, for this particular video, I do have um, some of all of those things to uh, to talk about a little bit. But like I said, I'm going to start with the uh, the single issues, and then work my way through the trades and uh, and so on. But as far as single issues go. Uh, the first book that I read this week, one that I was a little hesitant about, and I said so in my haul video, this is um, The Raven and the Red Death, the, um, the Edgar Allan Poe uh, adaptation done by Richard Corbin. And I will say that I didn't enjoy uh, The Fall of the House of Usher all that much, which he did over the summer. But this one I did like quite a bit more. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Richard Corbin's artwork, and it didn't bother me all that, uh, that much in this particular issue. It helps that The Mask of the Red Death is my favorite Poe story, so I was going to like this regardless. But um, but story-wise, I think Richard Corbin does a really great job in adapting these Poe stories, but uh, The Raven didn't get all that much of, uh, you know, as far as space in the single issue goes. But it is a short, uh, it is a short, short story, um, so I understand why. But this is one that I enjoyed quite a bit. It was uh, perfect timing coming out right before Halloween, so... Uh, I, while I wouldn't suggest uh, The Fall of the House of Usher to everyone uh, because I didn't enjoy it all that much, that one I thought was significantly better. So uh, if you were thinking about checking it out, I, uh, it has my stamp of approval. Next, Turtles number 27 came out this week, which uh, I like that Eastman cover quite a bit. I'm getting all the Eastman covers with, uh, with Mikey and his pizza there. But this is sort of the culmination of the... The City Fall story arc, it's, it seems like it's going to go in two parts. They finally are going after Leo and, uh, and Shredder. They're going to save him. And I like how that's playing out. It's sort of, um, you know, the, the rest of the Turtles are saving Leo, but he is working it out in his own head. He's realizing that he's not supposed to be with Shredder. He's supposed to be with uh, the other Turtles and Splinter. So uh, th this story seems to be playing out in a really interesting way, and I can't wait to read this. And we got uh, introduced to Bebop and Rocksteady in the in the ongoing, the main story, and then also the uh, the villains micro series came out. Their particular issue came out this week, and I love how they do it that way, so that the story and the uh, and the villains micro series sort of run alongside each other. Uh, gives that villains micro series a lot more importance. Makes me feel like I'm not just reading some other book, random one-shots about villains because um, because it actually has some sort of importance to the main story. And also, uh, the Shredder one, number eight, comes out next month, and then that will be the culmination of the City Fall story arc. So once again, it sort of goes along with it. And next, uh, this is the Swamp Thing Annual. This is the annual number two, of course, written by Charles Soule and uh, Javier... Pena on the artwork in this book, which was uh, which was really good, by the way. I really enjoyed it. I, I've been loving, you know, it's no secret that I've been loving Charles Soule's Swamp Thing since he took over the book, and uh, and this continues that. This is the the entirety of this issue is Alec in the green talking to um, prior avatars. They're sort of training him to um, to take on Cedar to defend, you know, his right to be the avatar of the green, prove that he is the most fitting fitting for the job, but. I really like how this issue was done. He meets with a couple different, um, a couple different prior avatars, and the second one being my favorite. Uh, he is told, you know, prior to meeting with this 
um, this avatar that it was, you know, he's sort of the greatest of them all, the one that they all strive to be, and we find out that it is um, the prior Swamp Thing, Alan Moore's, um, Alan Moore's Swamp Thing, and uh, I think it was it was done really well, and I'm glad that they brought that back into this issue. Charles Soule is, uh, is really doing an amazing job, and I can't suggest this book enough for Swamp Thing fans and non-Swamp Thing fans. Uh, if you're going to read any DC book, as far as I'm concerned, it needs to be that one. And finally, uh, as far as uh, books I'm going to talk about, this is Sandman Overture number one. This is an exercise issue with this really awesome J.H. Williams cover. Not the cover that I wanted particularly, but Tim is going to be sending me the uh, the Dave McKean cover who did old, the old Sandman covers. But this is a book that I really enjoyed with my limited knowledge of Sandman. I'd like to know um, how much I'm missing out because I haven't read all of the Sandman series, but I hope it's not too much. This seems to be... Uh, I heard that this is a prequel, and it seems to be working out that way, but uh, with my limited knowledge, I uh, I, I followed everything story-wise. I mean, as, as always, Sandman is a super dense story, um, really highly intelligent, which personally is my favorite type of story. That's why I love um, Al Moore's Swamp Thing so much. I mean, I like my books with uh, with a little bit of depth to them, and I like them to require a little bit of thinking to go along with them. But uh, that's why I enjoy Sandman so much, and that's why I like this issue. And fantastic J.H. Williams artwork. I mean, I understand why this book's going to be bi-monthly now, because there's some really intricate stuff done by J.H. Williams in this book. So uh, I don't know if I can suggest this to someone without any, uh, without any Sandman experience. I'd be curious to know if anybody picked this up, having never read Sandman before, if you were totally lost or if you followed it. But... Uh, this seems to be going in an interesting direction, and I can't wait to read this. And I really need to catch up on um, the entire Sandman series, uh, having read that. Leading into this, um, I had read this previously, but knowing that that book was coming out, I decided to flip through it and give it a, uh, a quick reread this week, and that is um, The Sandman Preludes and Nocturnes, Volume 1. Of course, the first volume of the Sandman series written by Neil Gaiman. Um, I mean, pretty much the same thing that I said about that single issue. It's a super dense story, highly intelligent, and it's not uh, its not something that you can just fly through without, uh, without thinking a little bit about the story. A really cool, different type of art style to these original Sandman stories. Uh, let me try and find a, a cool page with, uh, with Morpheus on it. But uh, this is a series that... I love, you know, just having read this first volume, I need to, uh, I need to pick up the rest of them because, um, this really is an amazing book and now I understand, having read this, I understand why, um, so many people love it so much and, uh, and it's just making me like that, uh, the new Sandman book even more having given that a quick glance over this week. And then also, uh, even though I had read the, the first trade of this, um, I decided to reread it all through this week. This is the Revival Deluxe Hardcover Edition. Of course, written by Tim Seeley, art by Mike Norton. Uh, definitely a, like a rural noir story with a zombie twist. Uh, about a... Oh, what town is it? Wausau, uh, Wisconsin. Um, people come back to life, but they're not a zombie in the typical sense. They are a, um, a reviver, of course. Um... It was assumed early on that they were normal people, like they just got a second chance to uh, to live again. But as the book plays out, uh, it's clear that these people are not uh, are not normal as they were before they died. And there's also some uh, some other interesting things playing out as far as uh, supporting characters and the non revivers in this book. So uh, this is a story that is really interesting, and I, I think Mike Norton's. Uh, artwork is really fantastic. I can't, I don't know what, um, I don't know what issue they're on in single issues now, but having read this, I think this is one through 11. Uh, I really can't wait until, until the next one of these deluxe hardcovers come out. Cause I'm going to be buying that as well. And those are the trades that I read this week. Uh, as far as a novel camera died on me there, but I'm back talking about 
uh, Battle Royale, which uh, has been sitting on my shelf for quite some time now. Of course, written by Koshun Takami, which is this is a book that is compared quite a bit to The Hunger Games, and you can totally tell why. Tell why having read this, but uh, it's a group of students who uh, a class, you know, a classroom as a whole who is taken to an island, and you know they're told that they have to kill each other, and this is supposed to benefit the. Um, you know, the country as a whole. Um, it's different from the Hunger Games in that all these students know each other going into this game. So it makes, you know, at least I think it makes everything play out a little more interesting because uh, you have these different dynamics between different characters. You have uh, all these students have reputations with one another. So they don't know who they can trust and they don't know... Um, they don't know if they want to kill their classmates because they know all these people personally. And there are, you know, some groups of people who will, who will you know, ally themselves. And there are uh, other people who go it alone. And it's very interesting to see how uh, how it all plays out. Um, it's It benefits from being a longer, more detailed book. I mean, The Hunger Games is definitely written for a younger audience. Battle Royale is much more intense. It's much more... Uh, much more gruesome, definitely intended for an older audience, and it's more detailed. And you get to uh, you get some little insight into all the characters, you know, around the time of their death. Uh, and you there, you know, so there's some emotional reaction, you know, attached to uh, to each particular character the time that they die. You know, a lot of them happen off, you know, away from Katniss, who's the main character in the Hunger Games. So you don't you don't feel the same type of emotion with. Um, with each and every character like you do in this particular book. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, Battle Royale is a far superior book. Uh, I know that isn't the most popular opinion. I know not everybody feels that way. But I feel that most people who have read the book, not seen the movie, read the book, uh, the Battle Royale book, and both The Hunger Games uh, do prefer this one. I would suggest the movie as well. Uh, the story has changed quite a bit, and it's definitely... Um, some intense Asian filmmaking, uh, and it's subtitled, but uh, but it's a really great movie, and if you don't want to read this thick-ass book, you can get that. Pretty much the same story, a little bit different in that, uh, in that movie. But uh, that's all the stuff that I read for this week as far as um, some stuff that's on my radar for this upcoming week. Uh, one trade, this is um, The Sandman, The Doll's House Volume 2. Uh, I picked this up at, uh, at a Barnes & Noble near me. Which I don't like doing because I like ordering stuff off in stock and getting it for cheap. But uh, but I did decide to bite the bullet because I want to read this book so bad. Um, can't wait to get into that. And then also from that store, I picked up. Uh, I'm getting my feet wet with a little uh, with a little manga this week. This is um, the first Viz Big edition of Dragon Ball Z. Thick uh, collection of the first three individual volumes. Uh, I have never read manga before, and I'm about uh, ha about a third of the way through this book, so it's a, it takes a little getting used to reading the opposite direction, but uh, I was super crazy about Dragon Ball Z as a kid. Uh, watched the show religiously along with Pokemon, so uh, I know all the stories that, that take place in this book, but it's really cool to, uh, to read it in this particular format, and also there are some differences with names and, and stuff like that from the show to the book, so... Uh, I'm going to be reading these. I think this is as far as I'm going to go as far as manga is concerned. Uh, I might go back and pick up the original Dragon Ball series, which is a precursor to this, but uh, I don't think I'm going to venture outside of that. I just love Dragon Ball Z so much that I needed to uh, to pick that up. And then I'm in with the new movie coming out fairly soon, I'm going to be doing a reread of um, the second Hunger Games book, Catching Fire. Uh, this pr was my pr my favorite of the um, of the original three, so uh, so we'll see uh, we'll see how I feel about that one the second time through. I mean, the movie comes out. Eh, I think it's like the third week in November, the f Thanksgiving weekend, uh, I believe. So uh, I need I decided I needed to uh, to finally give that one a reread. It's been on my uh, my list to do for a long time. So, uh, big thanks to you guys for watching. Hopefully, you like my new uh, my new format. If you're uh, if you're not interested in the 
the stuff towards the end of the video, you can just click it off uh, after I'm done talking about my single issues. But um, I will uh, I will talk to you guys soon. I'll see you guys on Wednesday with my normal haul video. Uh, take care, and I will uh, I'll see you guys soon.